Greetings, greetings, welcome, welcome. Greetings from the Empowering Temple of Praise Church, currently being constructed, yes, I say again, constructed, the new sanctuary at 3615 Reed Street, Fort Worth, Texas, 76119. You can go there and not see anybody there, but I'm telling you, God is about to do something for ETOP that's going to blow a lot of folks' mind. I Prayer has already been made, but before we get into the word, um, I, I don't think you noticed, but I'm a little under the weather. I have you anybody heard of shingles? Shingles? Yeah, I know. I had neither until it, it attacked my body. Um, and so you may see a grimace here every now and then. I was going to ask another minister to go ahead in my stead. But God said, no, Bishop, I want you to deliver this message um, for somebody. So that means it must going to bless somebody. I couldn't postpone it. I couldn't allow somebody else to preach something differently because God said, you do it. My grace. <laughs> ah, it's sufficient. It's sufficient. But for those of you who are 50 and above and you have not had your shingles shot, please go get it. I'm telling you, it's nothing nice. They are very painful. Um, but God is yet good. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm I'm so grateful. This I don't know why he allowed it to take my body, but I'm just so grateful. Bishop, why are you grateful? Because I serve an awesome and mighty God. <laughs> he took cancer out of my body. I don't care, I don't care what else I get um, before I transition or before Christ return to take his church. I have no idea, but I'm going to always be grateful and thankful um, for God and what he has done. Matter of fact, if he doesn't do anything else for me, I mean, no, he's already done enough. Yes, yes, yes. I already prayed, but let me sing this song um, um, before we get started. Yeah, Y'all know it. Y'all should sing it with me. Y'all should sing it with me. The, the song is... Amazing grace, how, how sweet the sound that saved. To this word. Let's get into this word. There's a word from the Lord in the gospel according to St. Mark. Mark chapter 10 verse 17 through verse 22. The gospel according to St. Mark chapter 10 verse 17 through 22. From the bid v version here is what is recorded. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him. He fell on his knees before Jesus and said, Good teacher, what must I do to receive or inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God. You know what the commandments say. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not be a false witness. Do not cheat and honor your father and your mother. The man replied, teacher, I have obeyed all those commandments since I was a little boy. 
Verse 21 reads, Jesus looked at him and loved on him. You are missing one thing, Jesus said. Go and sell everything you have. And I want you to give to the poor. You will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Last verse reads, the man's face fell. He went away from Jesus sad because he was very rich. Using for a subject from which to preach, it's in the form of a question. Is your heart in the right place? Is your heart in the right place? I, this is a very important question, saints. God gave me this message because the heart is, is, is where the real you is. The heart is, is, is something that can't be lived without. You can live without your eyes. You can live without your nose. You can live because you can breathe through your mouth, right? You can live without your ears. You can live without teeth. You can, you can live without uh, uh, your kidneys. You can live without your hands. You can live without your feet. You can live without your legs. You can live without your arms. You can live without your toes. You can live without your, your hair. I mean, so forth and so on. But there's one thing you can't live without. Absolutely, your heart. That's why it's so important to, to ask in relationship when you go to God and you asking that man for that man or that woman and you saying, I want God, I want this man, I want him to be this tall, I want him to be this size, I want him to weigh between these pounds, I want him to, to be a Christian. That's good. But let me let me break news to some of y'all who may not have known this. Until you listen to it, this message. Listen to this message. There are Christians with bad hearts. Oh my goodness. Ah. Oh. Oh. Ah. Oh. There are Christians with bad hearts. Yes, yes, yes. So, so, so see, there are some, some of you who have, who've been fooled because you've asked God for that woman and you said you wanted her to be a Christian. You wanted her to love God. You wanted him to be a Christian. You wanted him to love God. And, and God said, I got you. You wanted him to be this tall. Wanted her to be this size. Wanted All that stuff. Wanted them to have good teeth, white teeth. And wanted her to have long hair, short hair, curly hair. All, all these things that you wanted in your man or woman that you asked God for. But here, let me give you some news. The first thing you need to ask God for is make sure they have the right heart. God, I want them to have the right heart. I, I not only love you, but have the right heart. I, I don't want them to love you because of what you do for them. I want them to love you because you are God. See, I don't want them to love me because of what I can do for them. I don't want them to love me because of my looks. I don't want them to love me because I, I want them to just have the good, right heart. Because if the heart is good, then they're going to value everything else. If their heart is all into me and for me and belong to me and have a piece of me in there and you on the other side, then I know we're going to always be good. Even when we go through problems and circumstances and difficulties and trials and tribulation. If the heart that he or she has have you in it and I'm in there as well and it's right, I know it's going to be good. So, so I'm trying to help somebody in relationship and you are struggling in relationship and finding that right man or finding that right woman. And you've been wondering, I asked God for the Christian and he say he a Christian. Oh my goodness. I asked God for, for, for a person that loved God and she says she loves God. But yet, it's something missing. Oh, that, that's what the lesson is talking about. You, 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 you got the height right. You, you, you go to church. He, he say he a, he's a Christian. He looks good like God. You, you ask God for. But, but just like Jesus told this man in this text, all that is good. But there's still something missing. Oh my goodness. Oh, ah. There's still something missing. That's fine and good that you say all that. He's the height you want and the size you want. He's got the color teeth you like. 
But that's still something missing. If you ain't asked God for the person to have the right heart, you are all missing something. Here it is. I ask that for a variety of reasons because depending on where the heart is would determine the outcome of what they've said. Because anybody can walk up to you and anybody can tell you they love you. Anybody, matter of fact, thank you, Holy Ghost. Somebody can walk up to you and say, girl, your hair looks good. But how do you know they're telling the truth? <laughs> you don't know it. But, but they were smiling when they said it, Bishop. And do you know folk can walk up to you and be just as evil because the heart ain't right? The heart ain't in the right place. Matter of fact, before they walked up to you, they probably already told somebody else. Listen here, I'm getting ready to go up to Sheila and I'm going to tell her her hair look good. Watch her face because <laughs> that's a hot mess. That, her hair is a hot mess, but we're going to see if she's going to own up to it. Hey, Sheila. Hey, girl. Girl, your hair is nice. I like that style. Oh, thank you. And then once Sheila walk away, they said, she ought to be ashamed. What a hot mess. That old nappy piece of thing. I don't even know why she said thank you. But you going away thinking that, oh, that person gave me a compliment. No, the heart wasn't in the right place. They came up to you. The heart was all wrong. In the heart, they wanted to make fun of you. In the heart, they wanted to laugh at you. But they schemed and connived and went to you because the heart wasn't right. And you didn't know it. Why? Because you ain't looking for the heart. You are looking for that outward appearance. And that's why God said, yeah, man, look at the outward appearance. But he say, God look, God say, I look at the heart, because that's the real person. Where your heart is, that's where your treasure is going to be. What you mean, Jesus? I thank you. Jesus said, if your, if what you value is, if if your heart and what you value, uh, 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 no, nah, where your heart is, your treasure, your treasure is that where your heart be also. So what you value, that's what you're gonna love. That's what your heart and your actions gonna succumb to. It's going to match. You are not going to have um, somebody saying one thing um, with their mouth and, and then their action do something else. If they do, that's where their heart is there. If somebody say they love you, but they actually go out and sleep with somebody else and they come back home and say they love you, the heart ain't in the right place. Yeah, they may love you with their mouth. They love what you do for them. They love that you do this for them. They love what you buy them. They love being with you because you may be a, a person that they, they like to see with you, but, but there's something missing. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And if there's something missing, that means their heart ain't right. Why? Because they lying to your face, telling you in your face, I love you. And behind your back, they messing around with somebody else. Why? Because the heart ain't right. The heart is not in the right place. There are some folks too um, uh, uh, um, that, that, that will tell you all kinds of things in your face. I ain't just talking about relationship. I'm talking about church folk. Can we talk about church folk for a couple of minutes? Yeah, there are some church folk who will come in the church. And I, I, I know people say this all the time. They say, oh, well, I can't believe you lied in church. What's the difference? If you lie outside the church, you, you lie on, on, on Reed Street, Bright Street, or Tuscana Circle. <laughs> it doesn't matter. A lie is a lie. I know, but that's what we were taught, right? I can't believe you had the audacity to lie on church ground. Huh? L lying is lying. I got you. I know what you're saying, but Bishop, but lying in God's house, I got you. But my house at home is God's house. Why? Because what I do at the church house, I do at home. What you mean, Bishop? Uh, I sing. I pray. I preach. I testify. I thank God. I worship him. I praise him. I sing glory. So, so there's no difference. If I lie here or lie there, it's still a lie. But I know that's a misconception and that's, that's church talk. I can't believe you lied at church. But here it is. There are church folk who will, who will come inside of God's sanctuary and the heart ain't right. You're like, Bishop, but you always say the church is a hospital for people that's sick and heart ain't right to come. Absolutely. But I ain't talking about that type of heart not right. There are folks who, who go to church scheming to look at somebody else and what they are doing and what they're not doing when they themselves are not doing what they're supposed to do. Preach, Bishop. I'm trying to help somebody. That's why I said, I think I said this before, when the sanctuary, new sanctuary is being built, we're going to have a special area set aside called perfect people. 
and it's going to have a certain number of seats and it's going to be blocked off because can't nobody in the church be able to sit over there. Why? Because there ain't no perfect people. I don't care if you preaching, non-preaching, you're a minister or non-minister, you're a usher, non-usher, or you just come and sit in the pews. It doesn't matter. There are no perfect people walking this earth. I don't care who you are, how long you've been saved, how long you speak in tongues, how long, how many tongues you got. It doesn't matter. There are no perfect people. And there are folks with the heart not right. That's why you got to ask the question. The heart is not in the right place who will come inside of God's house not to praise God, not to receive something for God, but to look at what somebody else is doing instead of them getting their praise on and getting something from God that God would have for them. And they do it because the heart ain't right. But we, I say we, church folk, we, we look at folk and what they do and think the heart right. Why? Because they 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 fake. Y'all know I don't like fake folk. Like fake folk, bitch? Yeah. Folks who do stuff that they don't mean to do. It ain't real. I love you, but the actions don't work. Don't match. I care about you, but they but they lie and cuss you out and, and talk behind your back. I mean. If you love somebody, you're supposed to be able to tell them you love them. But watch this. Your actions should back up the fact that you told them that you love them. Mm, oh, my goodness. Your, your, your mouth, what you say, and then your hands and what you do should match up. If they don't, you fake. Mm. I'm just telling you like it I S is. Here it is. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Whatever you value, it will match what you say. There are people that out, oh, he ain't said, you ain't told me you love me in a long time. <laughs> if you got to ask it, it's a possibility. He probably doesn't. If his response is, Dog, girl, I gave you everything. I got what you want. You got a, you got the Gucci bag, and I bought you a two thousand dollar bag, and you got the MK purses. What, what else you want from me? I, I at least want you to tell me you love me. What you don't buying you stuff to prove that? No, no, that's a misconception. There's a possibility that he's sleeping somewhere else. We ain't touched each other in months. I just don't feel like it. <laughs> Oh man, I don't know who that for, but here it is. The heart, the heart, I promise you. Hey, get the eyes and the green eyes and the curly hair and high tall. You you focus on that later. The first step, God, make sure his heart right. God, make sure a heart is in the right place. Matter of fact, that's a song that 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 y'all heard of. It say, Your, your body is here with me. But your mind is on the other side of town. And I think he said, you're messing me around. He, now, he's talking about man and woman relationship, right? He's talking about couple relationship. Your body's here with me. Because you here. Like, am I here? Yeah, you here. But what are you thinking about? I ain't thinking about nothing. Are you thinking about me? Well, right now, because you're talking to me. But do you ever think about me? Yeah. I mean, if you got to ask those type questions, it's a possibility there is a problem with the relationship. Because there are folks who, who body is in one place, but they thinking about other stuff. Don't worry about it, church. I'm, folks, I'm talking about y'all too. I ain't just talking about relationship like he was in the song. There are folks come to church and, and, and I raise my hand first. There are times when it was a Port and Cowboy game on and I have been in church. I may not have been E-top, but I have been in church before. An important Cowboys game come on. You say important? That must have been years ago, Bishop. I got you. <laughs> and I was thinking about the game. I was like, man, I hope this preacher don't preach too long. Cause this is a twelve o'clock game today. I ain't by myself, so I can tell on myself. Well, I hope, <laughs> I hope, I hope this preacher, hope this preacher uh, preach. He got twenty minutes, and then we got altar call. Man, I hope ain't nobody go up to altar call. I tell on myself because I ain't by myself. God, she needs to sit down. She go up the altar call every Sunday. Shoot, how many things can be wrong with her? I think she's just trying to show out. 
Anybody? You don't have to raise your hand. I'll raise it for you. It, 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 that's, that's us. We're not perfect, right? So I know if I had that mindset as a young minister back in the day, then there's some other church folk who doing it even to this day. We're not perfect, right? God still loves us. But our heart wasn't in the right place. And sometimes we wonder, why haven't we received what we asked for, of God? Well, the answer could be that our heart is not in the right place. Our, our What we say and what we do don't match. When we sing songs, it's supposed to be real. We're supposed to have a feeling to it. It's supposed to mean something, right? When we sing songs of Zion, we worship God. It's supposed to mean something. It's supposed to be heartfelt because we're singing to God. We ain't singing to other folk. That's the problem because sometimes that's what we think we're doing. We're in the choir. We're on the praise team. We're singing to them. No, we're not. We ain't singing to the congregation. We're singing to God. Now, they hear it and they could be blessed by it. But if everybody focus on the fact that you're not singing, hey, we're going to ask for a solo from sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so. Automatically, their mind and their heart should be focused on God. I'm finna give you praise. But you know what we do? We go through a protocol thinking we're trying to sing to the folks out there, sing to the congregation. So we go up there. Y'all pray for me. I, my voice ain't this. What, you ain't got to worry about that. They ain't for them. You singing to God. You, you, matter of fact, you should go and pray while you've been asked to sing. Your prayer in your mind or verbally or, or orally should be, God bless me as I sing to you. Bless somebody to 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 listen to the song and the words while I'm singing to you, and, and that they get glorified and edified, and 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 receive something while I'm singing and worship to you, or while I'm worshiping you, or whatever the case may be. But now we don't do that. You know what we do? Um, my voice not as as like it should be, but I'm a, I'm gonna bless y'all. Uh, Oh, and in your mind, you like, shoot, I hope somebody starts shouting as I sing it. I hope somebody starts crying. Upset. I hope they clap their hands while I'm singing. I hope they raise their hand when I'm singing. That's the wrong. Your heart ain't in the right place. That conversation should be to God. God bless them to be touched by it. Bless the anointing while I'm singing to you to overflow in this place so that they can be blessed. So you, you've seen it, right? Person get up there and sing Ain't no anointing. Why? Because they're trying to please the congregation. And in my spiritual imagination, God like them. But you still have church folks do it. Sing! <laughs> Sing, girl! And other folks who are real, especially a mother of the church, probably saying she needs to get somewhere and sit down. Because it's all about the heart. Your heart must be in the right place. Let's go through this text right quick so I can get out of here. Uh, uh, watch this. The text says in verse 17 that Jesus was starting his way walking and a man ran up to him. Fell on his knees before Jesus said, watch this, good teacher. What must I do to... Inherit eternal life. What, what must I do basically to be saved? Well, that's what that is. If you save from the penalty of sin, that's eternal. You are living forever. Eternal life. There's no penalty. The penalty of sin is death, right? So if you're going to die for your sin, because of your sin, you have to be saved from that. We are saved from that by accepting Christ and what he did on the cross into our heart. Once we do that, we have eternal life. John 3, 16, y'all know what that is. So he's coming up to Jesus. Tell me what must I do to get that? Good teacher. I love this, y'all. Jesus is awesome. I, Jesus has a sense of humor all through the word. People don't realize it, though. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus say, why? Hey, hey, little man, why you calling me good? In verse 18, why you calling me good? Ain't nobody good but God. Watch this. Y'all be like, wait a minute. Isn't God, isn't Jesus God manifested in the flesh? Didn't Jesus say, I and my father are one? Yes. But Jesus has a sense of humor, y'all. Watch this. Because I inquired about this. This is what the Holy Spirit gave me. Ain't nobody good, nobody good but God. 
Why are you calling me good? What? See, this is a way of Jesus wanting to know who he knew Jesus as. He wanted to know, did this man come to him? Did, did, Jesus was basically saying, you come to me calling me good. I, I want to know, did you hear that from somebody else? Or do you know me as good? Oh man, I don't know. I don't know if I can say that again. What were you going by what somebody else said or you heard? Does a good teacher over there? Is, I know a good teacher you might want to go to. Or are you calling me good because you know who I really am? Mm, oh my goodness. I that's another sermon right there. You going by what other folks say, or you going by who you know? Me ass. Oh my goodness. Here it is. Jesus then told them the first six commandments. Y'all know the Ten Commandments given, right? Mosaic. Ten Commandments. But Jesus said, you know the commandments, and gave him the first six. He didn't give all ten. I love this, y'all. Why didn't Jesus give the other four? He gave, he said, you know the commandments. He, want, he was referring to the Ten Commandments. But, but he only tells them the first six. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness or lie. Do not cheat. Honor your father and your mother. That was a, that's four more in Exodus chapter 20. Or Deuteronomy chapter 5. There, there are, there are, that's 10 commandments. But on, Jesus only, I love this. He only provided the six because the first six deals with relationship. The first six deals with person to person. I love that, y'all. The, the other ones are not relationship material. Y'all can listen to that later, but here, or, or read that later. But I love that. Jesus was, was focused on relationship. You know these commandments, and watch this. I watched this lie. Look, young man said, oh yeah, I know those. Uh, I've been obeying those since I was a little boy. <laughs> Jesus looked at him. And basically say, bless your heart. <laughs> bless your bless your little heart. I love this, y'all. Jesus could have said, stop lying. Talking about you obeyed all those. You ain't slipped up one time since you was a little boy. You obeyed all the commandments. I just, I just listed these six commandments and you obeyed all these commandments. He never lied, cheated, steal, stole, thought about stealing, bear false witness. You know, you may not have murdered anybody, may not have killed anybody, but you're telling me all these other ones you've done, you honored your father and mother at all times. He said, I, I obeyed those since, since I was a little boy. Jesus said, bless your heart. He didn't say that, but that's my spiritual imagination. That's what he said. Why? Because the Bible said Jesus looked at him <laughs> and loved on him. Basically, oh, young man, okay. <laughs> I love that. Jesus got a sense of humor. Y'all just don't know it. But then he said, here it is. Here go that heart. Jesus said, hey, if, if you've done all that, that's fine and dandy. But here's the deal. You're missing one thing. And I can imagine this, this young man excited. Okay, what is it? I'm missing one thing. I've done all that. What, what else am I missing? Which one? Is there another commandment? What, what is there? Jesus said, I, I need you to go and sell everything you have. And here's the key. Because if his heart was in the right place, it wouldn't have bothered him to do what Jesus was asking of him. Go and sell everything you have and give to the poor. Let me help somebody. Let me translate it. Let me bid V this thing. You, you a millionaire? You got a million dollars worth of stuff? Go sell all your stuff. And then I want you to give some of it to the poor. But he couldn't hear that. Why couldn't he hear it? Because his heart wasn't right. If his heart was right, if his heart was in it, 
to win it, if his heart was in it for eternal life, if his heart was in Jesus and who Jesus was and what Jesus could do as far as eternal life and what he really wanted, he would not have ran away or walked away sad. But because his heart wasn't right and it didn't match what his mouth was, because his mouth says, I want eternal life. That's his mouth, right? His mind say, hey, go to Jesus, the good teacher. He can give you eternal life. So what must I do to get eternal life, Jesus? That's good, right? Good talking. His heart wasn't there. Bishop, why you say his heart wasn't there? He went there sincerely. No, he didn't. He went there probably because he heard Jesus could do something for him. But if he really went for eternal life, knowing what eternal life was, he wouldn't have walked away sad. Jesus only challenged him to see where his heart was because he came running to Jesus, kneeling before him. Hey, what must I do to gain eternal life? Because I heard you could give it. You know the commandments. Just a little test right there. That's like a little quiz before the command, before the real test. Do this, do that, do that, do that. You heard the commandment. Oh, I've done all those. Oh, <laughs> okay. You have? All right. You know, Jesus was like, basically, you got to start there. But since you saying you've already done that, how about this? Sell everything you have and give to those who don't have anything or who have very little. But in his mindset, Jesus told him to get rid of all the stuff you have. I don't want you to make a living at all. I don't want you to have no house, no car. I want you to be homeless. This is what, in his mind, this is what he was thinking. Why? Because his heart wasn't right. I don't want you to have no money in the bank. I don't want you to have nothing. Give everything away, and I want you to be poor, have no clothes. I want you to be naked. I, I don't want you to be able to pay for no bills. I don't want you to have nothing. And then when you do all that, then you can be saved. That's not what he said. But because his heart wasn't right, that's what he heard. The saints, why saints, you got to have the heart has the heart is most important. You got to have the right heart. Stop looking on the outward appearance with all these folks you are dealing with, especially when it comes to relationship. Outward appearance don't mean a hill of beans. You'll wind up being hurt. You'll wind up being injured. You'll wind up being confused. You'll wind up being 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 homeless and busted and broke and disgusted. Why? Because you ask for everything else about the person except for the heart. And Jesus has been telling us all through the word of God that it's the heart is important than any other entity of your body. Jesus said, I don't want your mind. I want your heart. Yeah. Because if I get your heart, all the other stuff you have, it's going to fall in line. If you get somebody's heart and you really have their heart, watch this. And God has their heart, is in their heart. Because they he don't just make himself present in there. They have to ask him into it. And if they've done that and God is in there and then you come and you're a part of that, you can't lose. I don't care. You be like, Bishop, I, I, I've done that and we we having a little trouble. Oh, you're going to have that. But trouble don't last our ways when God is in the heart of the person you love and that person says they love you and you are in that heart. What's been happening is God ain't been in the heart, but you've been in there, right? Yeah, but you've been in That's why it's easy to break your heart. You got to make sure that their heart is in the right place. Not their mind, because that can, that can go all kinds of ways. You know, people's minds wonder a lot, right? That's why it's easy for us to be in church, having a good time, and then somebody uh, say something about the game. We're like, oh, man, we're going to do that out to church. No, man, hey, I was listening to the radio. They down by three. For real? Why sermons going on? We, still, we checking phones while sermons going on, seeing what scores it. Let's tell you what you value. You don't really value that word. You're like, nah, that word ain't for me. But you know when, when you start valuing the word? When you're going through something and the preacher's topic is about what you are going through. Oh, you ain't touching no phone. It's on, it ain't on vibrate or silent. It's off. Why? Because you're going through. That's what you value. But God wants your heart to be in the right place at the right time at all times. Your heart should always be 
belonging to God. Your heart should always be God. There should be, God should be in your heart at all times. And if you're trying to seek relationships, you need to talk to God about having somebody else whose heart is right with God to come into your heart. Otherwise, you're going to always have discombobulated relationships. Let me finish with this. I was, I was uh, thinking about the rich man and this, this reminded me of this rich man. It was this, it was this turtle who had a huge ego, had pride, right? I don't know a turtle. wasn't that big. He was kind of light, so he wasn't a huge turtle, but a little small turtle. But he had a huge ego, pride, just like this rich man. He's like, oh, I'm rich, man. I, I can't go from being rich and then having nothing. Man, I, I got to think about this a little bit while. So he walked away sad, busted, disgruntled because he thought he, Jesus told him to give everything away and then come follow him. That wasn't necessarily the case. Just wanted to see where your mind was, see where your heart was. I mean, see, see, see if your heart matched your mouth, if you really mean what you say. You asked me what you must do, and I told you, and then you got a problem with it. Mm, ain't that something? But this turtle, right? This turtle uh, um, had an ego, pride. And he was up in Chicago, and he was like, oh, man, it's getting ready to be, be winter. I need to go down south, maybe to Texas. But he realized he's a turtle, so there's no way he can walk from Chicago to Texas. Um, in time, he said, by the time he get there, it'll be cold again in Texas instead of the summer. So he's like, hmm, I got an ideal. So he goes to a couple of his duck friends and he talks to his duck friends. And they come over and talk to the turtle. He said, what's going on? The turtle said, hey, y'all headed south? He said, yes. They said, yeah. He said, I, I got a got an idea. It's a good idea, man. I'll come up with this plan. Hopefully y'all can do it for me. He said, What's up, turtle? He said, Hey, I just found this branch. And it's a strong branch. He said, I bite on it. He said, I got a good grip. They said, well, okay, what, what's that for? He said, if y'all don't mind, I wanted to go to Texas, you know, why it's winter, because it's a little warmer down there. It's not as cold like in Chicago. They say, well, how are you supposed to get there? They say, well, that's why I brought you guys here. Y'all my friends, right? I don't weigh that much. I was wondering if you could grab one side of this branch and you can grab the other side of the branch. And since y'all going down there, I can hold on to it while y'all flying and we can fly down there together. They looked at each other and said, well, you're not that heavy. And they lifted them up. Okay. They said, yeah. We can do that. So Turtle say, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can never repay you. That's what friends are for. So he bit down on the tree limb. And the two ducks got on one on each side, and they start to fly. And they flew, 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 flew. About 10 minutes in. While they were flying, 10 minutes in, a person was on the ground, right? And he looked up. He said, what in the world? <laughs> he said, that's a that's a a turtle holding on to a look like a tree limb and two ducks of of holding on to the ends flying it. Man, I wonder in the world that is crazy. I wonder who thought of that. That is a good idea. Y'all know what happened, right? Turtle had to open his mouth and say, I did. Ego. Pride. And a lot of time, that's that's the downfall of people. Ego and pride gets to you. You just got to be right all the time. You, you got to say stuff all the time. You got to take credit for it all the time. You got to be big. You can't go from being rich and poor. You got to have this. People know me as rich. I can't be just having a little bit. People know me as this. I can't. God said, you got to get rid of all that. You want eternal life? You want to have a prosperous, wonderful life? You got to stop thinking about what other folk think about you, what they say about you. Just trust God, believe in God, acknowledge God, 
praise and worship God. And always, when you need something, ask God and he'll answer. Ask yourself the question. Just ask somebody else. Is your heart in the right place? That God will continue to bless you and keep you is my prayer. Don't forget your seeds, tithes, and your offering. We're trying to get ETOP Sanctuary built. Until next time, God bless you.